When doing macro photography, we often have the problem that we are not having enough depth of field and cameras such as the Canon EOS R5, they have a in-camera focus bracketing, meaning the camera is capable to do a series of pictures, let's say 30, and between each picture the focus is shifting a tiny bit and then these pictures can afterwards be imported to the computer and there basically a composition of these pictures is done so that you have a larger depth of field. The R7 is actually doing this whole process in camera. So what you get out of the camera is already a stacked image with a larger depth of field. And in this video, I want to show how you can do it with your Canon EOS R7. Before we start, maybe quickly, why do you need this feature? Can you not just uh, close the aperture down a bit to enlarge your depth of field? Um, in some situation, this might perfectly work and then I would also encourage you to do it because it's just so much easier. Um, but there are some situations where you kind of reach the limit with what is possible here because when really having a big magnification in macro photography, it's sometimes just the case that even with F16 or F22, you don't have your whole subject in focus from A to Z. And also the background rendering is not as nice anymore, obviously, if you use, let's say, F16. And the third point is that maybe for some of you, the alarm bells were already ringing when I mentioned F22. We have the problem of uh, some blurriness that we cause due to uh, diffraction here especially with high resolution sensors and even worse with high resolution APS-C sensors. So we're just not getting the maximum out of it. In order that focus stacking is working properly, you need to meet certain requirements. And this is basically your setup should not move. So this means your camera should really be on a tripod as sturdy as possible. I don't have a tripod yet here because the only one I have currently is on my other tripod filming myself. Um, but this is fairly sturdy. And on the other hand, here we have a little small owl that is perched on my, um, my 16 to 35 lens. So this is also not moving, but just be careful if you're out in nature, if you have uh, some beetles, butterflies that are moving a bit, try to take pictures of them early in the morning after a cold night when they will still not move. And also pay attention to wind. And this is of course also important if you're taking pictures of flowers or whatever. Um, really nothing should move, otherwise it will not work very well. So that being said, let's dive straight into the menu and you can find the focus bracketing in the tab number six of the shooting menu. So I'm clicking on this menu item. I'm going to enable focus bracketing as you might have already guessed. And actually what the camera is suggesting here might be a good idea. You can start a new folder just to have it separate from your other pictures if you prefer for better organization. I'm not doing this now. And when I'm enabling focus bracketing, the camera is also switching to the electronic shutter if you have not used this before. So the next thing we need to set is the number of shots that the camera is going to take. Um, this is a tricky one. It's not always easy to answer. I would rather aim for something higher than lower because the worst thing that can happen if you take too many shots is just that you don't need them. If you delete the raw shots that are saved, the, in this case 40 raw shots and afterwards anyway, not a problem. If you want to still keep, you can just keep the one that are important and the one that are not in your focus area, you can also delete them. So I would go for a bit more here. In my case, I take 40 just to be sure. This really depends on how much of a depth of field you want to achieve, how much you're stopping down in the already in the camera and so on. Then the focus increment, this is how much should the camera move the focus between each frame. I'm rather on the conservative here, side here and go for like a one or a two to have something more narrow. So I rather have more pictures with a small step than fewer pictures with a larger step because then I'm just risking that there is no overlap anymore between the shots. So just to play it safe, I'm actually going to one here. And this is not a unit as in centimeters, inches or whatever. It's basically dependent on what aperture you have set on the camera. So the camera is doing some magic calculations here. Uh, the next part is the exposure smoothing. So let me quickly explain this. 
basically when you move the focus there is a lens element in the camera that is moving and this is somehow well changing a bit how the light is hitting the sensor and this can cha cause uh, changes in the exposure so this is also compensating for that and then finally the depth composite you want to enable this one this is by default disabled so what we did before was basically the same as we could have done on an r5 it's just the exposure bracketing and the depth composite is the process of automatically stacking all these together in camera already and when doing so usually the corners or the edges of the frame they don't add up perfectly so you will have some black edges corners and the crap depth composition um, if I put this on enable it's basically just cropping the picture already nicely so I'm also going to enable this and that's it for the settings so let's go on and start with the picture um, first thing you want to make sure is that the focus is on the closest that you want for the whole stacking process so I'm quickly zooming in to check if this is fine I think the beak should be a good position yeah and the other focus was also hitting this and the second thing I usually try to do is uh, well I have my camera on zero because the raws are just huge and usually there's not a big difference in image quality if at all but what I really wanted to mention is the drive mode I would select the two seconds um, how is it called the two seconds timer just because you can already see if I touch here the camera sometimes the subject is then not the subject is moving but the camera is moving a bit so the subject is moving in the viewfinder and this is not a great starting point for a depth composite so what I'm doing is making sure that if I press it's two seconds and now you can hear the camera working you might hear how the focus is shifted but what was probably louder now was um, the artificial sound of the electronic shutter of course you can turn this off if you prefer and you can now see that the camera is trying to put the images together and it's already done so if we now have a look at the picture um, I think it looks pretty good I mean I'm not sure if there are some small details that were not done perfectly but Honestly, I could not tell. I'm navigating a bit through all places, through the edges. Yeah, it looks quite well. And actually, you already saw a picture before the last one. I mean, how the camera stopped when doing the composite, that the layer was in the end really at the back of the owl. Uh, it was at the back and not behind. So it really meant the 40 images were necessary. Maybe I could have done uh, could have lived with 30 and increasing the increment between the shots but as you saw even 40 shots are done so quickly I really prefer to do a few more and be on the safe side and as you might have also seen this picture here was a JPEG um, the camera is only able to do this in JPEG unfortunately but if I'm honest I'm usually doing this kind of stacking and macro photography early in the morning when there is no sun so if there is no sun I don't have harsh uh, like shadows no harsh light so that's not an issue for me um, I'm perfectly fine with this I just pay a bit more attention that the white balance and the exposure are really set properly and if I scroll a bit back in the camera it's also saving all of the raw pictures so I usually what I do is I just dump them somewhere on an external hard drive or on my server I leave them sit and sit them there for uh, I don't know one half a year a year and if after this time I realize I can really live with the JPEG I will eventually delete it but I think it's nice to know if you have a bit more complicated shooting situation you can always go back to the RAWs and then um, do the composition in Photoshop or whatever program you prefer. That was it for today. I hope you find this small tutorial helpful. If yes, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel and hopefully see you soon. Bye.